Hello, everybody. I'm pretty sure I'm live. I'll get more comfortable with it as time goes on. Uh, <laughs> just gotta get my microphone in place here. <sighs> I gotta tell y'all, it has been a day. It has definitely been a day. I just barely made this even later time than what it was last week. Uh, just been in and out all day, so this is gonna be nice to kind of just decompress and do some hobby work. Uh, just gonna let the um, stream kind of go for a bit, make sure everybody can hear me all right. Make sure that the music and everything uh, is balanced, doesn't uh, sound too loud. So I'll wait for at least somebody to filter in here. So we've got that. Uh, but yeah, well, a good thing about me being a little later than last week was I was able to go out and actually do a bit of shopping, and I actually I finally got myself a a wireless mouse that works with this laptop so I can control the stream a little better than I was able to last week so hopefully the transitions between this and the desk camera are a little smoother at least that's the hope <sighs> so let me just get a couple of things together here Oh, I only just barely made it downstairs in time to get everything set up. So just gotta let myself breathe just a, <laughs> just a little tiny bit here. Um, but uh, yeah, let's get the lights going here. Let's get the desk camera up. And you can already see kind of what we're gonna be working on today. Uh, just let me rehydrate my wet palette here then I'll uh, talk about exactly what we're doing though you can probably guess so yeah this uh, this week was uh, highlighted by me finally uh, finishing my transports for my Imperial Guard army so I, uh, I got those done, and now I'm trying to print off the, uh, the rest of my uh, armor that I need for my force. So uh, all of the Lehman Russ kind of proxy stand-ins, just going to get the camera a little bit better centered there. Uh, uh, all the proxy Lehman Russ uh, stand-ins are, uh, they're not done printing yet. I had a print error last night uh for one of them so i had to clean the vat and everything and then try uh try something else for one of the parts so it didn't uh come loose from the plate uh and that's what we'll that'll be printing in the kind of the background uh today as i do this um hey the anto how you doing having a good one just going to get myself a little tea here because I have not really drank anything to hit all. <laughs> or really, well, I've eaten a bit, but I just haven't really drank anything. So let me get myself some hot tea, just freshly brewed. There we go. Got some hot tea cam footage right there. my throat a little wet so I can keep talking wow that's still really hot um, but yeah uh, last week this was the finished product of my test f uh, for my space marine force as you can see it's really dark it's really dark I did not go hard enough on the w uh, white highlight uh, over the black undercoat. So what I did was uh, went over the ones I had already done, and you can see, I mean, this has already got the metal layer on it, but uh, 
I went a lot harder with the white highlights. So hopefully that plays a little nicer with the uh, the speed paints. Um, so we got that one. We got her right here. This one's also pretty heavy in the highlights. Um, and then because I didn't just want to be painting two Space Marines today, uh, I went ahead and built uh, the, I think this is the Lieutenant from the, uh, well, it comes in the Indominus box, which I have one, but this is the, uh, the one that came in the Imperium magazine, the first issue. So as you can see, uh, I did a little modification, so used uh, one of the lady heads that I had and uh, modified the helmet so it looks like it's mag locked to like her belt. So got that and uh, also put my chapter shoulder pad on there. So we've got that. I'm I was originally just going to be using a, a like I as you can see right here I had just have a whole bunch of shoulder pads of mo of a lot of different marks most pretty standard ones uh but th uh the w these ones here these uh uh if i can get it to these ones here with the uh like the kind of really thick like riveted um what do you call it riveted uh i, gu I guess um liner or whatever um rim uh, I really like the look of those, and those are, I think, Mark three and four shoulder pads. Um, so what I'm, I'm going to do is I'm just going to print off a whole batch of these in like uh, at half the layer height these ones are printed at, and we're going to see if that works. If it does, then I'll probably just stick with these shoulder pads for my chapter, just because I think they look, they, they've got a little bit better detail. Like I mean, they've got something in there for like recess shading to kind of work with, whereas something like. Uh, this is uh, has something like I mean it has a bit to it if I can get it to eh, it's not wanting to uh, focus I mean it's, it's got a little bit on the the, the uh, rim like this one specifically has like a little skull and like a little cutout and I've got a couple of those but uh, I like the little rivets or whatever these are on the side here. So I'm going to stick with those for the chapter. Um, I think they're more interesting. So, yeah. So how's everybody doing out there today? Hmm? Everybody doing good? I'll wait for the... Uh, Hey, Pelly. Riveted trim are Mark 2 and 3. Oh, yep. Yeah, well, yeah, that would make sense then. Yeah, I'm going to stick with those then because uh, I, I really like the way they look um, just on this. And I can see already a little bit of metallic I missed. I'm going to have to repaint uh, here. This is why you never, you never just go without reviewing your work because, yeah, I can see just a few metal bits. I've got to paint still on this girl here. Um... Actually, the riveted Mark II and Mark III shoulder pads kind of work because uh, I forget who did it. Uh, hey, K-Dog, I'm doing great. Uh, I said earlier I've been kind of just walk. I've been doing a lot of in and out. I'll just go ahead and put the uh, face one on here. I've been, uh, yeah, that's good framing. Uh, I've been in and out all day today. So I actually didn't have, uh, like, the first stream of this that I did I had maybe like an hour, hour and a half lead up time where I just like cleaned and made sure I didn't look like a slob and got everything set up. Um, today, I quite literally came down here at 2.29, <laughs> one minute before uh, I went live with my tea because that was that was like one thing I uh, uh, got... Uh, it was the last thing I had gotten done. Like I had, I started brewing like like I don't know ten minutes before I went live. Uh, so yeah, I was, I've just been rushing in and out today a lot. K dog, not T dog. Um, uh, 
So, uh, but yeah, it's just been an in and out thing all day today, and it's just been so, uh, it's been really stressful. So hopefully this kind of like lets me uh, decompress a little bit. Uh, Pally, I've been okay. Took a day to myself, then went to spray prime stuff, and the primer broke. It's a bit of a bummer. Just been cooking pizza. Oh, well, hey, pizza makes everything better. Let's be honest. Um, yeah, no, I... I kind of took a day for myself as as well, just in terms of I haven't really been looking at Discord all that much. Uh, so it's just kind of, you know, obviously I haven't been really home that much either. So I guess it's not really a day to myself, but whatever. I just haven't been worrying about it today. I kind of turned off my notifications on my phone so, so I didn't have to deal with it. Uh, I can see those are piling up, though, so I need to uh, need to look at some things. Um, to get back to what I was saying uh, before... Uh, the um, Mark two and three shoulder pads kind of work because there's um, an unofficial codex for uh, a like a, an all female marine chapter. I forget who did it. Uh, she's a really good artist. She made a couple of of like uh, lady mar space marine uh, pieces, and then got like a lot of backlash from like the grognards uh in the community uh and then use that as fuel to just make more stuff and ultimately just made her own codex uh i think it's for what are they called the ladies of persephone or something like that and like the persephone is the um uh primarch of the uh chapter well, i guess it's the legion um and a part of their lore is that they were kind of like caught in a warp storm for uh, 10 millennia and they just recently come back. So it kind of makes sense that they would have older shoulder pads and stuff kind of nice things. So these might be like a uh, a second founding or something of the Daughters of Persephone uh, chapter, which would be kind of fun. I could tie that into there and uh, give it a little bit more, um, what do you call it? A little bit more... Uh, uh, Shine a little bit more light. Let's go. Uh, that that's how it's at. Shine a little bit more light on uh, on a really great fan work. So yeah, just probably go with that. <sighs> so let's just go back to the desk camera here. Take another sip of my tea. <sighs> but yeah, today. Um, I'm going to be finishing up the metallic layer for uh, this lieutenant. And then uh, her and these two will be given the uh, 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 kind of like the really thin down wash of glaze medium flow improver and dark tone uh, wash over that. Let that dry. And then we start going to the uh, to do the actual speed paints sorry my brain is still a little uh what do you call it a little bit uh <laughs> it's running at like quarter speed right now uh hey uh oh god uh pdjr oh, this term. oh i know what that tag i know who that tag's associated with but it's bl i'm blanking on it right now i'm blanking on it no no, I'm not going to embarrass myself by not by, by not by not saying the correct one. Uh, glad people are showing up. This is uh, always a nice little stream to kind of just, you know, not have to worry about stuff. Uh, I forget. Did, was this was this the shining silver or the regular metallic? I think this was just the. I think this was the shining silver. So let me just mix up my metallic on my palette from last night. Separated a little bit, but it's still savable. That's why you always want a wet palette. It's always really useful. It's just Paul. Okay, great. Hey, Paul. Uh, <laughs> also, Mike. Hey. Yeah, no, this is just going to be probably about three or four hours of me just doing some painting and talking with chat you know giving my bad takes <laughs> on the mini wargaming hobby uh just gonna make sure i've got the uh uh you know pretty normal okay got that just going to get that metallic 
metallic off there. It's the best thing about metallics on a wet palette is they already get thinned down enough that you can really save if you put the metallics somewhere by just using a little a wet brush and a little bit of finesse. You can get the metallics off of like a base coat, which I kind of need for this. Can't have anything out of uh, place. Okay, so I got the belt buckle I've got to do. I need to listen in as I just hang the, here myself and play some games. Tempted to do some crafting myself today. Hey, well, it's never a bad day to do crafting until it is a bad day to do crafting when you have other things to do. But, I mean, that almost never happens. Crafting's always priority. Um, I need to... I, I wonder, do I want to use copper? Do I want to use copper or, like, a, a dark metallic for the belt buckle or do I want to just keep to a very limited paint palette because I could just use right my regular gun metal for the belt buckle and that would look fine because right now all I have is three different metallic colors on here it's a gun metal a shining silver and like a, what is this called this is a tainted gold color I picked up the uh uh, what is it? The Army Painter Metallics box, which has uh, just a whole bunch of colored metallics. And honestly, I have the other Army Painter gold color. Uh, the, this one, though, the tainted gold that comes in the metallic box, I really like it. It's really nice. Like, if you can kind of see those little um, reliquaries on her belt. Oh, that's... You can see it, it's just a, it's a really nice subdued gold color. Like an oily gold in a way, as compared to something like, uh, like the greedy gold color, which is a very, I guess, an orangey gold, which I don't really like that much. Then again, Army Painter metallics are really iffy. I, I usually just use Vallejo for the most part, but when I want a real range, it's I've, I gotta use what I got. Uh, moved down to my parents' place last Sunday. Now I have you on in the background while I play MWO with Rival. Ah, well, hey, tell Rival I said hi. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to use my limited palette. I'm just going to use, like, a, a gun metal for the belt buckle. That works just fine. If I really want to change it up, I could put a speed paint on top of it to give it a color. Just got to mix up the uh, paint a little bit. And be careful because we're at a step where we can't really get the uh, under. We don't really want the undercoat to be uh, touched by anything that isn't speed paints at this point. That isn't metallic because it'll show up. So. can be a little bit because that's it's not that big of a deal if it's just like a little overlap because we're going to put the wash over it that'll tone down any issues give some definition hide like the minor overpaint spills but yeah that subdued's pretty good and then we'll just have the uh, we'll use the same color for the belt cap at the end uh, Alexander Hennisborn. Hey, hey, how's it going? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, so yeah, why well, start painting this and then doing an inspection of all the work. Um, I did say that part of this was just me rambling and uh, I have a topic I want to cover because it's been bothering me since I picked it up and I want to uh, uh, or oh, I'll, uh, hold on we got a question uh, K-Dog do you have a favorite chapter of Space Marines Roach? Actually not really uh, my, my problem with Space Marines is they're so generic they're really not interesting like I think I've, I've, I haven't said this publicly, but I think my uh, my issue with Space Marines is that they have like pretty defined stereotypes 
like or I got not stereotypes, but uh, inspiration. Let's say inspirations. Um, I'm gonna let that metallic dry for a bit before I I go over anything else. Um, they have they have pretty defined inspirations. Like uh, like the white scars are definitely like the like step peoples kind of you know the Mongol horde kind of thing. Uh, you play what you're saying. We'll get to that, Anto. Um, you've got that for the white scars. The Raven Guard are very like morose, um, just kind of broody, but not as broody as the Night Lords. Um, you've got, uh, you know, you've got the Dark Angels, which are just like, you know, Inner Circle Knights, Black Templars, which are Templars. Uh, Iron Fist, um, Crimson Fist and Iron Fist, I'm not sure. Uh, but then you have the, you know, the Ultramarines, which are based off of, like Roman. And then obviously Space Wolves are Nordic. Um, the problem is, is they don't really lean into that. Like, well, the Space Wolves lean into it a lot. Like, they, they, they lean into the whole, like, Nordic Viking feel a lot, and that's why they're very popular. Um, problem is, every other chapter doesn't really lean into it. Like, the White Scars kind of do in the lore, but on the tabletop, there's, I mean, not really, uh, which I guess is kind of a blessing, because we'll get to my original planned tangent, because it involves the White Scars. Uh but uh, most of the others don't really do anything with their their kind of feel to it. I, like it, it's it's not enough. I, I so they're really not distinctive enough for me to like them. Um, so so not really. I don't I don't really have a favorite. Um, I guess if you had to twist my arm, if you had to twist my arm, it, it'd be a toss up. I do like the Black Templars for the lore, but I don't like the imagery. Um, and I, oh, this is, yeah, this is hard. Um, I kind of do like the Raven Guard, just a little bit. Uh, but I, I I guess I, but I always gravitate towards a very subdued color palette in my, uh, so you can probably see what I'm talking about. So, so yeah, that's, I don't know. None of them really spark interest in me. Oh, obviously Blood Angels as well. I forgot that was a chapter. Um, but yeah, those ones don't even really interest me that much either. Yeah, there's not a lot. I guess, I guess, lore-wise, if I really had to say it, I like the Lamentors. I think they. I think if I had to make like an actual canon Space Marine chapter, not one of my own, the Lamentors would be the ones I'd want to make, just because. <laughs> just, no, just, just because I don't know. I think, I think them winning a battle would just be like would feel nice because they they deserve it. They really need they, they need a win. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so, so, so not really, so I guess, I guess general question, no, I don't really have a favorite Space Marine chapter. Specific question, maybe the Raven Guard or the Lamenters, like, kind of, like, like but even that's like really pushing it with the, with the term like, so, or, or favorite, because, so yeah, I'm much more of an Imperial Guard guy. I'm just going to review the metallic layer here to make sure I didn't miss anything. Got to do the wash, and then I got to block out any of the blacks that we need. I know a few places we need the black. I don't think I got anything I missed for the metallics. I might. I don't know how metallic-y I want the Volkite pistol. Is the problem? the the, the issue The issue is the fact that the Volkite didn't exist. The Volkite pistol and the Volkite weapon type didn't exist when I got into 40k. So, so I kind of don't know what to do with this. <laughs> uh, but I'll make do. No, I didn't miss anything in the backpack. Sword hilt and all that. Painted up well enough. No, I think that's good. So yeah, we'll get ready for the uh, the wash. And we're going to need to put on here. If none of these others also have anything that pops up. Um, 
but to the point I originally wanted to talk about, um, the the originally planned tangent rambling, um, I I picked up for the first time in a while a black library book on Audible. Uh, I don't know what overcame me to do so. I think I read. I think there was some there was some chat thread somewhere that quoted something and it sounded interesting and then I said oh it's from uh, this book it's from this book and I thought oh I'll give it a shot um, and it, the book is uh, what is it Damocles is the uh, is the uh, is it Damocles? Damocles I think it's Damocles uh, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> my in progress casting since started trimming side bits hey that's totally fine um, but yeah, it's the, um, it's, it's, it's called Damocles and, and what it is, it's a, it's a Tao centric kind of book. Um, and I think the, f it, it's two small stories crammed into a book together because they're related, you know, general, uh, uh, black library stuff. Um, but the thing is, uh, so the principal chapter of space Marines that is represented in the, uh, the book are the white scars uh the white scars uh, chapter of space marines and i i i, I got to i, I got to tell you guys i got to tell you guys it's probably a good thing that there's not a lot that gw has done with the white scars because i can tell they're trying but they kind of crossed the line a couple of times with the one it's an obvious British guy who's doing an Eastern step accented voice when he talks, at, when he's when he's narrating the uh, the White Scars uh, like uh, captain chapter captain that's in the book. Um, and yeah, it does like I don't know when this was recorded and when it was written, uh, but it's relatively recent because it features Riptide like battle suits and stuff in it, so it has to be from like seventh or eighth edition like so it's not that old um and yeah they, I, I i i can see why they don't do a lot with the white scars because they kind of wrote themselves in a corner there uh with that uh and like yeah and it's just like they're you know uh carrying around skulls of their enemies on their belts and just there's a lot of stuff that in context of where the inspiration for the chapter came from just reads really <laughs> kind of iffy. Uh, also, I didn't used to think about it, but the fact that the Tao all have kind of like really subtle kind of Asian-ish accents kind of, I don't know, it rubs me a little bit the wrong way. Uh, what are we painting today? Uh, well, Ben, uh, we're painting some Space Marines. Uh, I am going to try and make a slightly better version of this lady here for these three. Uh, I learned some things, so we're going to try and fix it. Uh, so the heavier undercoat of white and all that kind of stuff. So that's what we're painting. Right now I'm talking about really, um, really in context kind of, uh, uh, which, which get problematic <laughs> Uh, lore choices that GW has done for uh, the White Scars Space Marine chapter. Uh, mostly just because I'm I'm currently listening to the, a book that features them. Uh, sorry, I just got to get some mixing cups here together. I ran out of my first pack recently, so I just need to get these together because we'll have to mix up a wash. So, let me try and finish that. Uh, thinking about Space Marines, I'm generally not a fan. I was Pelly, uh, generally not a fan. But I really like the Iron Snakes from the Gaunt's Ghost uh, Sabbath Crusade. Really interesting squad comp with an apothecary in each squad. I mean, yeah, there are some interesting bits. Uh, otherwise, for me... Otherwise, for Marines, I'm really not much of a fan of... Really much more of a fan of Chaos Marines. 
Night Lords and Iron Warriors. I like Iron Warriors too. I, I think I think if if you had to give me like a broad scope, Iron Warriors are interesting for me. Um, there's some lore stuff I don't like about them, but I could just ignore that. Uh, Night Lords pre like pre real chaosy Night Lords I really like. I like the concept of the Night Lords like during the Horus Heresy. I, I like those. Uh, but after the Horus Heresy, kind of like, you know, modern 40k, I, I don't like them that much. Okay. So I finished the, uh, the metallic undercoat for these girls here, and now I need to make the subtle dark coat that will go over them give them a little bit of definition and then once that dries then we start putting on the speed paints so what this is is a, a dark tone wash from army painter with a, a almost 50 50 mix of this specialty kind of like flu uh like uh, mixing fluid it's a glaze medium and airbrush flow improver uh Specifically, this is from Vallejo. Night Lords is Chaos Space Marines I don't really like, but the Night Lords trilogy is really good. I don't know if I've read the Night Lords trilogy. I th honestly, if I'm going to be honest, if I'm going to be honest, the Night Lords as a, I think the reason I say I kind of like the idea behind them is because I the uh, Lord of the Night, dark hair, uh, black, uh, black library book, uh, Lord of the Night. I really like that. And it was a uh, it was a really great um, book that uh, had a Night Lord in it from the Her Horse Heresy era, uh, and I, I enjoyed that. I need to buy me some more. Cause I think I'm gonna do that next week. Well, hey, good luck, Ben. It's the worst time to ever get into the orcs because uh, they just came out with uh, a new boys squad that uh, is all monopose. So. You, uh, if you want a full squad of chopper or shooter boys, you need to buy multiple boxes. Uh, so yeah, that really sucks for the orc players. I don't know if you can still get the old boys box, but if you can, go for that. So let's get some dark one, dark tone in here. Get that going. Let me get the mix here. Really desaturated. Okay. And then I need my mixer. Here we go. It's a little barbecue skewer to mix with. Just go ahead. I need a little bit more of my washing medium just a little bit more oh yeah for those wondering this mix what you really want is at the bottom of like your mixing cup. If you uh, you turn it, you can see like right there. It's it's not sticking a lot, but it leaves just a slight shade. That's what you want. Like less than milk. You want this like skim milk consistency. Uh, and with that, I'll get my thicker, really crappy brush for the uh, for this. I realize now I. Use my main water dish for this, for the metallics. So I've got to clean that out again. So let me just get a little cap here to put some water for this step. Don't really like the Tau except for the Farsight's faction. Yeah, no, I like Commander Farsight as a faction too. I think that's a that's a nice little. I, I think that's a nice addition to the story. Uh, actually, the Damocles uh, book I'm reading right now it primarily features uh, Commander Shadow Sun and her, like her point. She's a point of view character, um, and yeah, I, 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 
I, I it kind of makes me want to get the Farsight book because there's a book f uh, that features Farsight as a character. Uh, but so, so far, that book has not been great. Because uh, not only with the problematic, like, faction stuff, but a book of, like, the actual book itself isn't great. Uh, because it's, um, I've noticed a couple of, I, I don't know if it's, like, a new guy writing it or what, but the, um, he falls into the trap of, like, new writer syndrome where you reuse very unique words multiple times in a passage. Uh, it's, uh, like, what was the one I kept noticing? He kept using in the text girdled. Like, girdled isn't, like, a girdle, but describing, like, a physical feature girdling another physical feature. And that came up like like 12 times. And it's such a specific word and a specific concept that definitely has better words to use or different words to it. Like, you know, get a, th get a thesaurus and you'll find it. You'll find something to kind of mean the same thing. And uh, there was that and there was a couple of other bodily, bodily like, like something bodily hitting something else. Uh, but like in random ways and what was the one passage and the, and the bot and the, uh, the corpse bodily struck through the fog or mist or something like that, which makes not a lot of sense. Like it just sounds cool. So yeah, I'm not sure if I really want to get any more, <laughs> any more black library books. I don't know if I just got a bad one or what, but I'll continue, you know, listening to it. Cause I bought it. Well, I didn't buy it. I had a credits, but still, Okay, now let's get this on the Marine. This will give definition to the white and the other colors, including the metallics. It'll also give it a slight satin sheen that will make the speed paints flow into the recesses easier so it's kind of a a required thing you need to do to make this whole process work you're lean and red magnus yeah, Speed Freaks list. That'd be fun. I did always like the the idea that the orcs, for their uh, for their like I guess color theory, uh, that purple is the stealthiest color, and when <laughs> and when asked why. Why is purple a stealthy color? The the response inevitably always is, well, you ever seen a purple orc? I didn't think so. I, I, I love that. Orcs are such a great faction. One of the only factions to really maintain that old 40k feel of it being a, a, a satire. 40k needs that, honestly. I hate when writers do that. Breaks my immersion in a book and everything. Yeah, yeah, reusing the words, yeah. Uh, this is like Roach ASMR up in here. <laughs> I don't I, I don't think, I, I don't have a binaural microphone, so I don't know if I can really be considered uh, ASMR. As you hear me randomly lurch from one subject to another. sure we don't get any like bad pooling yeah that tainted gold looks really good after it's been given this wash too I really like that color uh, 
It's uh, being a little red and fast. <laughs> Orcs need more DACA. They've got a lot of DACA. It's kind of their thing. Though, actually, now that I say that, didn't the DACA, DACA, DACA rule get changed in the latest codex? And now it's not nowhere, it's nowhere near as good. I can't recall if that was a thing or not, because if it is, then that's a shame, because that was the fun part about the orcs, was their, uh, was the DACA, DACA, DACA. Just the randomness of the, the orc shooting face. So I can tell that story. Yeah, no, actually, I think there are a couple of purple orc, like, I've seen a couple of purple orc, pur purple orc armies, uh, which, uh, which is always fun. People kind of leaning into that. It's the Lost Tribe of the Orcs. <laughs> it would be great. Uh, but then also you inevitably in every like game shop, you always get, whenever that starts coming up, you, you always get somebody saying like, well, I brought a purple orc arm. I brought purple orcs today. You just can't see them. Because they don't think you can see them. <laughs> See, when you said you thought, when you were thinking of a red kind of theme, I thought you were actually going to paint red orcs, which is a thing I've seen a couple of that are actually, it really works. It's really nice. Um, like, you know, the whole green skin thing, I do like it, but uh, people just kind of going out and doing what they want with the, with the color schemes and like doing like kind of really nice, uh, like weird skin combos and stuff and painting them well. It looks, it, it always looks great on the table. And nobody really gives a crap <laughs> in terms of like that it's not lore accurate. Well, okay, not not. There are people that do give a crap, but those people's opinion you shouldn't care about. <laughs> so, just making sure I've got my. I can probably. get a little shot of my gut, but you get a better view of the painting. Yeah, we want this to be pretty smooth as an application. We don't want it pooling in any weird areas here. So, clean off the brush and start doing that. Thankfully, no one in my group of players would care. Yeah, that's the thing. Nobody, yeah. That, that's when you know you've got a great group. It's always the downfall of a lot of new players as they, they go to, like, a shop. They don't know, but it's, they don't know that this, it's kind of a part of the culture there, but they're, like, super super into like oh it has to be lore accurate and everything and it's yeah that, that always that always eats away at a lot of players and it's it sucks because people should just be able to do what they want and like i've said multiple times this army is kind of a litmus test this space marine army is kind of a litmus test for those kinds of people because it's an all-female space marine force which isn't lore accurate, but if you care enough that you voice it to me when I'm playing against you, then I won't want to play with you in the future, and I'll keep an eye I'll keep that in mind in the for like future games. So that's the kind of the plan behind this. It's kind of an it's an easy way of making sure I don't deal with assholes. That and also it's a it's an interesting concept of a force. I don't know. I might even write up a short story or something based on based on them. Okay, that's one layer down. You can already see a difference, by the way, from this. Like, you can see how this one's 
got like a crisper got like crisper panel lines and that's what we want uh, thankfully no one uh, there are some really hardcore players at work but I stick to the casual group yeah yeah that's always good always good I still like the idea. I still, still find the idea that, that the Paradox offices like have a gaming table and like an active Warhammer group. I guess I don't find it surprising, but I do find it in. I find it funny. Be great if there was like a an in studio Warhammer tournament or something in the, at some point. Which, I mean, I guess there might be. I don't know. I didn't even know they played Warhammer that much. So, what do I know? Oh, yeah, there's so much terrain and shit just kept at the office. Well, yeah, I'd assume so, because, I mean, it's with that kind of, I mean, it's in Stockholm, so I'm assuming the square footage of an average, like, apartment's not much. So you got to keep it somewhere. And terrain is the most space-intensive part of the hobby. On average. So yeah, we're just putting this wash in. And because it's such a diluted version of the dark tone, it really only stays in the recesses. That that the mixture we added to it in a one-to-one -one ratio, or close to a one-to-one -one ratio of glaze medium and flow improver really does make this almost a, like, almost equivalent to, like, what you'd get from, like, an enamel or an oil wash itself. Like, it's very thin, and it really seeks out the recesses. It, re it, it helps make this process a lot easier. Gotta make sure it doesn't get overloaded anywhere. Because unlike an actual oil wash, this does not have the ability of coming off with like a paint thinner or anything like that, even days after you apply it. Though I do have a couple of acrylic paints that do work like that like the uh like that shader paint that i showed off last week or did i show that off last week i don't know if i did or not but uh there's a shader paint from ak interactive that uh at least until it's set for like a day it's an acrylic paint but you can reactivate it with a uh with just regular tap water and it's acrylic so it's it's very uh, very easy to work with, not uh, toxic.
one's done. So now we get to the lieutenant. This one's going to be interesting because it'll be the first one that uh, will have the uh, cloth. Uh, the uh, cloth color for the force. And whereas the force's armor is going to be like a sand or a, like a sand or a sandy brown kind of color. Uh, I'm thinking like cloth elements are going to be something like a uh, I'm thinking a turquoise or like a really light blue. Uh, because that's, uh, you know, color theory time, that's opposite of the color wheel, so it should contrast well. So I'm hoping that works. <sighs> okay. So yeah, we just get the, the wash over them and by the time we get done with this one uh we can get to these two will be dry What a really nice shading on this shield here. I decided to not go really heavy with the metallic elements, whereas all the center bit on all the art is usually gold. I'm just going to keep it the same color as the armor, but the skulls will be gold, because I think that, that kind of works. Okay, dog. Ben, is Paradox considered making a 40k, a Warhammer 40k game? Uh, I don't know if Ben will answer that, but I can definitely say like it wouldn't be up to Paradox if they made it. It'd be up to GW because they'd have to actually like okay the license to be used. And uh, right now, in terms of strategy, I think Slytherin is the one that's making like a lot of those. Or at least Slytherin's making, like, uh, whatever that Gladius one is. Uh, which isn't bad. It's not a bad game, actually. It's pretty good. Started off rough, but now it's apparently kind of turned into a really nice, like, 40k version of uh, Civilization. Hey, Utari! What's up, man? Get the excess kind of off here. Don't want a huge amount of pooling. If we bring it down too much, then there won't be a lot of contrast when we put the speed paints on. Yeah, welcome, Utari. We're, uh, today, we're painting up some Space Marines. And I'm just, uh, getting all the steps done before I start applying the AP speed paints. Uh, because that's how I'm going to be painting up this chapter. So I don't spend another year working on an army like I have been for my guard. Considering what plans I have for first, the first Legion army when the new Horus Heresy edition drops. Eh. 
I don't know. I'm not too interested. I understand why people are, though, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm not that interested in it. It's one of those... Uh, looks like it could be good, though I do think the... Uh, what do you call it? The... Uh, uh, the legionary kits they've shown off so far are really busy is my problem with it which would make painting them kind of difficult Not to say they don't look good, actually, but it's just they're very busy. What uh, what chapter am I painting up? A uh, custom chapter. Custom desert-themed kind of uh, Space Marine chapter. So this is a. Uh, uh, let me get. Let me get all this off my brush before I show an example. I know it would kind of be interesting if Games Workshop did let more devs try. Oh, they have been, so I, I, I think that's a thing, uh, K-Dog. Not a fan of the Praetorians, but the Mark VI Tax Squad seems okay. I'm more interested in the fact uh, we know a lot of basic core units are going to be plastic. Uh, yeah, Spartan, etc. Yeah, no, I, I, I get that. Um, oh, yes. Uh, yeah, no, the uh, this is the first test uh paint of this style but i didn't go heavy enough on the uh the white highlights uh so because you can kind of see how dark the undertone so it was a bit more like a basic it was like a zenithal highlight with a little extra but um so using this as an example i went ahead and uh i gave them a much more robust white highlight so there's really not a lot of total black except on the ex just on the extreme undersides. So I'm going to see how this works with the speed paints on top. Uh, so we got so we're going to be testing it out on two uh, from, I guess, the, the quick build, like start like the quick build. Uh, uh, like three. I don't know where this comes from as a box. I mean, this was in the Imperium magazine. It's just like the quick build assault intercessors. Uh, so, uh, these two ladies, we got to paint up and then, uh, I got the, uh, the Lieutenant from, uh, well, this is from the Indominus box, but, uh, it's the same one that came, or this is from the Imperium magazine, but it's the same one from the Indominus box. So I have a spare if this doesn't go well. So thought this would be a good way to go about it. And if it does go well, then I'll start painting up the, uh, the, um, Oh, what do you call it? The special edition captain from uh, the uh, Imperium magazine, because that came in uh, the mail uh, last shipment. So I gotta do a head swap, and uh, then uh, they'll be ready to paint up. So yeah, the uh, the white highlight is done. Now we're just putting like a really really runny dark tone wash over the uh, the white under layer to give definition to the armor panels. And then once that's done, we'll block out any black bits that we need on like the gun and area and areas like that. And then we start applying the speed paints.
Definitely tell I probably should have had a a thicker varnish coat over my white ink highlight coat because I can see it came off in a couple of places where the brush has scraped in, so that's not great. That's a, usually a pretty tough white or that's usually pretty tough varnish, so it definitely just didn't get everywhere, so it was a, it wasn't too thick of a coat. So for future I need to put a heavier layer of that down before I start because if the white undercoat here is just uh, white ink it's not uh, it's not acrylic well it's acrylic but it's a acrylic ink it's not an actual like paint uh, yeah like that on the helmet just came off so I think I can rescue that with just a tiny bit of white. Maybe like an off-white color. White ink is good. No paint comes off of airbrushing. This was all airbrushed on, so it does come off. Uh, I just need... Uh, I just didn't have a hard enough... Uh, I didn't have a thick enough varnish coat. Because the areas where the varnish wouldn't have gotten as well... There's a couple of bits and pieces where it's come off of, so I'm going to touch that up with a tiny bit of probably white. Also, maybe like an off-white color just so I can get that. Good. See, so yeah, let's let's see. I said close, not off. Comes close, close if airbrushing. Oh, okay, sorry. I'm reading and painting at the same time. Sorry, you gotta give me a little leeway here. Uh, okay, let, uh, I got an off-white somewhere here. All right, let me get a tiny bit of off-white. Tiny bit of off white, with just a tiny bit of white ink. If I can get this off. Mix that on the palette. Yeah, don't worry. I ain't. <laughs> okay, that I did fix it.
It's not perfect, but it'll it'll work. So that's done. That's still drying. Pretty sure this one's done. And it's a little drying left. Whew. So let that dry for a bit. So once that's dried, that'll effectively also function as a uh, like a really light varnish. So hopefully the under the undercoat of white doesn't come up um, that much. Uh, and so yeah, then we go ahead and we start applying the uh, speed paints. Uh, they're gonna be it's gonna be interesting. The first two should be like uh, pretty simple. We're just gonna be using uh, some. Uh, what is it? Pallid bone and grim black uh, for everything. Uh, the lieutenant, though, this one's going to be interesting because it has. She's got a cloth tabard. Yeah, I think I think I'm going to stick with the idea of doing like a uh, like a t uh, like a turquoise color. That turquoise color, I think there's one in the speed paints line called, uh, oh, what is it called? I think it's called uh, Plasmatic Bolt or something like that, which should be fine. If I only got one, I got to make do with what I got. Just cleaning up a little bit of excess wash that pooled at the bottom of that shield. But... Uh, yeah. Get that done, and uh, not sure what else I'm going to do today. Uh, there's a 3D print going on behind me. It's of the uh, another batch of shoulder pads for these ladies. Um, I don't remember how many are in there. I think it's like might be 12, 12 or 14 shoulder pads. Uh, but unlike these, it's going to be a uh, uh, they're, the layer lines aren't going to be um, uh, what is it? Is it is it 50 micron? Uh, I'm doing it at a half layer line, so it'll be 25 micron, and we're going to see if that uh, gives it a little smoother finish. If it does, and they print off okay, great. Then we'll have the new standard. It takes about an hour and 20, hour and 30 minutes uh, for all those shoulder pads, so that's going to be good. Uh, audience engagement stats boosted. <laughs> hey, Trinix. I mean, everybody's been... It's been pretty good. A lot of people have been kind of in and chatting. I've had... Most of the mods from the uh, Vicky3 Discord in here. I've had one of the dev team, or I, I guess QA team, but still uh, in here. So that's been great. I'd even, uh, I'd even say if you, if you want to, you can plug me on your Twitter. <laughs> and see, and see how high we can boost this. Um, but uh, yeah get all that get those printed out and if these get done and they turn out okay I might just go ahead and start work on the first squad of space marines for this army uh, because really the only other thing I've got right now that I need to do is um, I've got five vehicles for my guard four tanks and a flyer uh but the four tanks are a little held up right now because I've had a print failure on one of the print plates. So I needed to rework the plate layout and to add some supports to one of the pieces. And I'm hoping at that point it it's fine. But uh, yeah, it's a... Uh, I need to get that done before I can really finish off. I've got, th I've got uh, the better part of three tanks done in terms of print other than that one 
bad plate. So that'll probably be next week by the time they're finished and ready to go. And it'll be a... Um, then uh, I'll have one more tank to print out. That'll be the veteran. And then the flyer. And the flyer is like seven plates or something like that. It'll take the better part of a week to, to really get everything together. Uh, if everything prints off okay. Fingers crossed. Um, so yeah. I might just go ahead and do Marines today. We'll see. It's supposed to be it's supposed to be popular. Marines are supposed to be popular, right? Right? Yeah. E celeb status inevitable. <laughs> I don't know about that, Trinix. I'm uh I'm fairly mediocre. I'm just going to get myself another thing of tea here because my, I can feel my throat getting the little scritchies, which always happens when you talk a lot. Got to be aware of it. Keep in top form. I really do like the fact that I, I got this. Like, uh, this is a lot better than trying to like reach over and use the trackpad for my uh, for operating the stream. Now I don't have to touch the laptop at all after I get everything set up. I'm just going to see if this responds with a little bit of a watered brush. If it does, then it's not dry yet. But if it doesn't, then it's... Do you have to say I really like it after that wash is applied? It really does give what is essentially pre-shading to the panel lines, which is really nice. Well, where's my black paint at? I have it. I mean, I own one. There it is. I got way too many paints. I actually don't have many like actual like bottles of black paint. The, the like I've got this one. I think that's about it. Like the only other one I have is uh is the Vallejo Surface Primer, uh, which is actually yeah, that's starting to get a bit low. I might need to order another one of that. That is that that's gold in a bottle. And so is this. If I had to say the best black paint that's in like an actual dropper bottle, like a dropper bottle black paint. I'd say it's it's uh, Army Painter Matte Black because the uh, this is so thin but high pigment. You can't like you could prime minis with this from an airbrush almost without thinning. Like it's that thin but it's so high pigment. It's almost a an air like an airbrush paint like out of the bottle this is amazing uh so amazing that it, i think it's like i think there's only a quarter left so it really needs i need a new one uh i have surface primer matte black ap and abaddon black because i got it with the imperium magazine yeah i got abaddon black too i'm not uh, well no actually i don't have Abaddon black yet that's next that's the next shipment uh but yeah surface primer from Vallejo, great for surface priming. You let that cure, that thing's gonna like hold. Uh, but uh, yeah, the the Army Painter or Matte Black, I think, is my is my favorite. Confirming that one for sure. Just a drop or two of thinner is all it needs. Yeah, no, it's 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 thin enough that you don't really need to do a lot with it. Like it, it just it just kind of works. Like I have I, like my acrylic inks need more thinner than the AP Matte Black. And it's it, though I will say it's not necessarily matte. It's a, it's got it, maybe it's like a it's a dull satin, but it's it's close. So we need to black out this little hand grip on the gun, and uh, the uh, handle for the sword, not the pommel or the quillins, but just the the actual wrap. So yeah.
it's almost a one and done paint too. Like it's thin enough that you just kind of need one coat and it'll it'll work. Get this blocked out here. Make sure I get every little bit without going over the metallics. Okay, that handle's good. Uh, and now the sword handle. Yeah, there's a couple of little tiny bits that can be seen, so we'll skip that. You know, just going back to the discussion on black paints, like, I, I actually, I think I prefer the old Chaos Black to the current Abaddon Black. Because it's, I, I think the old Chaos Black was a bit more matte. But then, yeah, that's my problem with all of the GW paints as well. Like, not only for the fact that they're in the paint pots, which I, I, I hate vehemently, um, but the, uh, like, a lot of the, the uh, GW paints kind of dry, really satin. Like, like while well, the while well, the Army Painter paints dry in like a dull satin, it's it's starting to get uh, like I don't know. It's like a mid satin to almost like a high satin, like a, almost a gloss with some of those paints. And I don't know. I just prefer it to have a, a very uniform. coat i mean if you're trying to do like a lot of washes and stuff like that i guess you could just like the the satin's good for that because you want something with like a, a gloss or a high satin um that could uh that lets things flow better that's one of the reasons why we're using the the black wash with flow improver and gla and glaze medium uh before we actually put the spade paints on because that'll make it uh they'll run better into the uh uh recesses Some have improved, some have got worse. Yeah, I get that. The blacks are definitely on the satin side. Yeah, the black. I think the blacks are the worst. Uh, maybe not the worst. Uh, it's uh, even Corvus uh, comes across as satin and it's freakishly gray. Cor oh, Corvus. Uh, hold on here. Let me check. That's that's got that's like a dark gray, right? Hold on. Let me check here. Corvus Black. It's Forge World. Corvus Black. Yeah, that's it's not a total black. It's a very, very, very dark gray. If you if you're wondering what I'm using right here, honest. Uh, by the way, uh, I have to tell you, this app. Hold on. I use this app all the time. This is called. Uh, actually, what is it called? It's called Paint Rack. You can get this on Android. It's. It saved me so much time. I use this like when I go out shopping. It just lets you keep track of model paint ranges. And it has like all of them, like all of them listed with color, uh, like uh, 
uh, what do you call it, color um, swatches. But not only that, this is the part I really like. If I go to like a store and I need, I need like an equivalent. If I go to my local store, I'm out of ash gray. I need an equivalent. I could compare the ash gray with other lines and get the closest match in another line. So like Citadel, the closest match would be a Bil uh, uh, Basiliconum Gray. It's not cl it's not as close, but it's close. Or it's not a perfect match. So it, it's, it's honestly really great, like as an app. I would say if you're a painter, this is really good. It also lets you, um, you can like scan the barcodes of your paint and it'll keep track of that uh, that paint and how many you have inputted in uh, as ones that you have so i have like i have all of my like pff, i guess like almost almost 300 paints on this app with my profile and i can keep track of how many i have all that kind of stuff uh it also lets you like make like paint sets and stuff like that if you have like steps if you don't want to just write it down on paper uh like i i've got uh I've got a couple here for my various armies. So yeah, that's uh that that's what I was using. I was using a uh uh paint rack. Very good app. I highly recommend it. Okay, I don't think there's anything else that needs to be blocked out as black on this guy or well this girl. Now, this lady needs same thing. Pommel doesn't have the pistol out, so doesn't need that. I don't know if I want to mess with the grenade at all, because I might just use a speed paint on the grenade. I don't know. I mean, I could always just paint over it with a regular paint, and it wouldn't matter, but still. Yeah, see, that's why every, that's why y'all come here for random tangents about paints and an app you don't <laughs> you lot don't use. Uh, no, we'll wait on that. I was gonna say there's a little like neck stocking uh, on the head sculpts for the head swaps, and I was wondering if I wanted to paint that black or if I'm just gonna use chaos black on that, uh, or no, no, grim black, grim black, which is the uh, speed paint uh, black that I have. I think we'll just go with that because we're using the grim black speed paint on all the under armor bits that show through already, so that doesn't need that. couple of bits here that pooled. Let's see if we can rescue that. Yeah, that's another thing about having the flow improver and uh, glaze medium mixed in with the dark tone. You can kind of reactivate the paint a little bit longer afterwards. So if you have like a really bad stain mark, you can just get a very wet brush and just very gently kind of pull it away. And it'll come and it'll slowly start. To disappear. Uh, 
not the best rescue, but there's not a huge stain, just a little line stain there. But other than that, it looks pretty good. Okay, now to block out her. Bits here, so. For this pistol, it doesn't have a handle on the front. I'm wondering if I want to make the magazine black. Or like a super dark gray. Ooh, that's, that's a question. Because I, I have a couple of really dark grays. Like a basalt gray might look good. We'll leave it. We'll leave that. We'll just do the sword. That's already going to be kind of a bitch to get in to anyways. Because we're going to have to kind of go in between the helmet that I've modified to be on the belt and the uh, arm. It's not as visible as it would be in the default model. too noticeable. I gotta tell you guys, I love this paint handle. I used to like the Citadel one quite a bit, but uh, I've had that Chuck models at Mach 2 against a wall before one too many times for me to still keep using it. Sword handle has been painted black, so that's good. Yeah, I'm not sure what to do with the Volkite. The, the problem is, is I have no reference for the Volkite pistol because it didn't exist when I got into 40k. So I, I think I know it's almost it's it, in terms of like painting it's it's basically like a plasma pistol but it uses like a red color I think or like a reddish orange color as like these uh, little like uh, heat fins but I, I, yeah I don't know I don't have context so it's hard to make like a plan when you haven't seen a couple of examples because I may not paint my plasma pistols exactly like how the uh, heavy metal like painters do or stuff like that but I, I like you know I. It gives you context. Uh, Tari, I do like the Citadel one for sure. I think so long as you're careful loading the base in it, then it becomes six of one, half a dozen of the other. Whatever handle works for you is personally the best. That's true. That's true. I don't know. I think the reason I like this one the most is because it's... It, I don't need to mess around with the model. All I need to do is uh, blue tack the um, the models onto these like little bottle caps, and then they just screw onto the handle. And once they're on the handle, then you know I've got 
control like in 360 if I want to do that or you know I can hold it in different ways and it's pretty like light and when I'm done just unscrew the bottle cap and do the next model so I bought like I don't know like 12 of those little caps with this handle and uh, that way I can have a whole squad like all like ready and I can just keep switching them in and out that was my problem with this my problem with this was the fact that I always I had to keep you know when I'm painting one uh, if you're doing like what was it? If you're doing assembly line painting, this isn't great. That's my problem with it. Most of the painting schemes I do are usually assembly lined. Uh, because you're doing like one step for one model, then you got to take it out, make sure the other one's super tight and then and not going to fly anywhere. Another step, take that out, etc. Whereas this one, you can just kind of take, do one, screw it off, screw one in, etc. It's, you know. I think that's it. The other one I used to use, and I still have it on one because I ha I have. It's been so long since I set it up, and I haven't finished it yet. Is the I used to use these little like Tamiya paint pots uh, as a, a handle as well, because uh, I had like I think I had like fourteen of these. So if I had a whole squad, I could kind of put them all on here. Um, so yeah, this little commissar I need to paint up at some point. This is a third edition, by the way. This is a third edition Commissar. This was out of print when I started 40K. So, yeah, it's uh, it's old. So I'm gonna paint that up for my current uh, for my current work in progress guard army because I I think it would be fun to have uh, such an old model with. Uh, so actually, all of the models that are GW in that army are are, are out of print. <laughs> now I think about it. So, yeah, I, I need to include them all, don't I? Yeah, it's fair criticism. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think that's the. I think that's my major criticism with the Citadel handle is it just doesn't work with my painting style, which has always been an assembly line. So I think that's just where I kind of land on it. Other than that, it's fine. Like, you know, it's, it's okay. Though, I will say, I preferred this one to the uh, Mark II uh, handle. The Mark II handle, I think, is too skinny. Like, I, I like having a good grip. Like, I like having a good grip where I can kind of, you know, do this. But I, if this was a lot smaller and it was, like, you know, tinier, I don't sure, I'm not sure I would like it. But I haven't had a chance to really mess around with it. I'll get it, uh, I think, in two shipments from the... Uh, I'll get it eventually from the Imperium magazine, so I'll be able to test it at some point. Uh, use the old blacktop uh, Citadel paint pots with blue tack, too. <laughs> yeah. I think everybody kind of does that. Uh, so the blue tack is... Let's, let's be honest. Blue tack holds the hobby world together. <laughs> uh, okay. So those are drying. I'm going to switch out my paint water because I used a lot of metallic paints uh, without realizing it on my main bowl. So I need to clean that out before I start putting other paints through here. So I'm just going to go ahead and dump this and then uh, fill out another one. So I'll still be able to be talking and hopefully you all can still hear me as I go to the little sink area in the basement here and just rinse out the bowl. I gotta get a paper towel. It's something I always forget when I go over there. So I gotta get a paper towel and then just go ahead and wipe down the inside here so we don't get any little metallic flakes in the bowl. And refill it. Okay. So there we go. Paint water's there. So pretty sure this I'm pretty sure she's done. This the uh, the helmeted one, so we're gonna have to start actually doing this process. So I've got these over here because I still don't have a place to actually put my uh, 
my speed paints continues to elude me. Uh, I also just need to make sure I've got, yeah, plasmatic bolts. I'm also going to bring the blues over just to see. I might use them. Clapper's blue. Gray. And sand golem, possibly. I guess reds would also work if we're going to be starting to do some... I'll just bring half of the damn paint set over, I guess. <sighs> so, let me just go ahead. Put this down here. So, yeah. Oof. Oh. <sighs> so let me double check to make sure nothing's blowing up online for me. That's 13 notifications on Discord, so let's make sure nothing's on fire. Uh, doesn't look like anything super on fire. Apparently some people sent, left a voicemail for me I gotta check at some point. So, yeah, right now, we start with the speed paints. They'll take quite a while to dry. I think the current, like, uh, I think the current idea is that speed paints take about, like, an hour or two to fully dry. And then at that point, you still can't really work with them. you got to put a varnish on top if you're going to do anything on top of them. Which is... I, I, I can do that. Uh, it's just... Uh, yeah. The varnish itself takes some time to dry, so I don't think they'll be done by the end of the stream. But we'll get a good amount of the way through them. Uh... Okay, nothing's really blowing up there. Great. So I just need to pop over one text message to somebody. So, which is why I'm not recording my. Screen there. Okay, so I got that. Let's go over here to the desk. So here's the current idea. The uh, armor is painted in pallid bone, which is like a, a bony kind of like tan, like light sand tan color. I don't think I'd have the patience to paint minis watching you do it is fun though. <laughs> It's a, it's a, it's just like any hobby. You, you, some, for it's for some people, uh, but not others. Like, uh, what is it? Like some people really like working on cars. It doesn't inter that doesn't interest me in the slightest. Uh, but you know, it's so it's you know, just who, whatever you like. Uh, so pallid bone is going to be the actual armor color. Uh, any of the leather is going to be painted in dark wood, which is a really dark brown. So I really like the look of this for the like holsters and belt and stuff. Um, then the undersuit is going to be painted in grim black. I'm not sure if I want to keep going with grim black for the undersuit. It's either going to be grim black or like a Gravelord gray. 
starting to lean towards this though, just because that'll give a little bit more contrast for the uh, the little like ribs on, of the under armor in between the armor plates. Yeah, we're going to go with that, actually. We're going to change that up, so put that over to the side. The current big thing, though, that I have to figure out is for her and the chapter as a whole, uh, what do I paint the cloth? And there's a lot of, there's theories, there's a lot of different things I could do for this. Like, I could drop it. Uh, I could basic color theory, go to the opposite end of the color wheel and try that as a color, uh, which would be something like this, like a plasmatic bolt, which is like a like a turquoise, which, you know, would contrast very well with the sandy color there, which could work. That wouldn't be bad. That or I could just use more of a, a of a regular blue. And I have actually, that's one of the colors in this that are very common in this speed paint set. So I'm, I'm trying to think. The armor color is pretty subdued. It's, it's a fairly subdued color. It's, a, you know, a sandy color. But do I want to, like, make it pop? Because plasmatic bolts that, you know turquoise color is gonna con it's gonna be a very bright loud color but that would that would also contrast with the armor not only in a color theory way but also in a stylistic way which might be nice because space marines kind of need that they really need something to pop so i think we'll stick with that actually and then for the volkite i'm gonna try one of these uh i'm gonna try one of these reds uh, to see what I want. I might go with Fire Giant Orange, just that, because that's like a really orangey red, and I like the idea of doing something like that over, like it'd be like a Blood Red or a Slaughter Red. The Slaughter Red's like a dark, saturated red, and the Blood Red's kind of, are, are darker. Uh, Slaughter Red's a little darker red, while the Blood Red's a saturated kind of like red. So I'm not sure about that. So, we'll see. So... These all have to be mixed, and I can't put them on the paint palette because uh, they are super thin. They go straight through the palette paper, so I have to get just... I'm gonna think, do I have an old paint palette sitting around? Like a plastic one. Because if I do, I'd rather use that than use one of these cups, because these cups, like, I'll go through them way too much. Uh... Let me just see. Because uh, I've got... I used to use, like, an actual plastic paint palette, but I don't know where I keep it. Ever since I was switched over to a wet palette, it kind of hasn't been that important. Uh, it's not in any of my drawers... Maybe it's on one of my storage shelves here. Uh, could use an old blister pack. Ooh, not there. Not there. Not there. I got way too much space. Way too much space and not enough organization. I really need to get a label maker uh, here. Uh, there's my other old wet palette. I guess I don't have my old plastic palette anywhere. Huh. That's annoying. Oh, well. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then we'll make do. Uh, yeah, we'll just have to make do. Uh, do I have, like, plastic anywhere? Like, I'm just a regular, like, a sheet of plastic. I've got an old plastic card flows a lot, but it shouldn't be that bad. Let me just... Should be fine. See, this was a uh, bit of plastic card. I tested my uh, vehicle like uh, 
paint colors on. So we'll just go here. And we'll mix up the palette bone. With my little vortex mixer, so that's what you're hearing if you're hearing that through my microphone. So, give it a nice, good mix right there. Get that on plastic. And now I need kind of a decent kind of larger scale brush with a nice point to it. I guess we'll use this old this monster brush. Not as in it's a very big brush, it's just called a monster brush because it's an army painter brush and they use weird names instead of using the actual standardized like number skew. Okay. So let's start applying the paint. The good thing about speed paints that's also a detriment to them is that drying time. Well, it does mean that it takes a long time to actually have the paint set, which kind of is, is in a lot of ways opposed to the actual naming of the paint line, speed paints. Um, it does mean that it's relatively easy to mess around with the paints on the model if you like mess something up. You just got a wet, you got to get a wet brush, and you can usually pick it up and not have to worry about it. would love to see this color kind of just on a straight white model and just see how that that looks but I do have to say this method does produce really just smooth transitions from highlight to like shadow my only problem is how dark the shadow is sometimes it's really, and that's really up to me because I'm the one putting the highlights in. So I could just give it like a super light dusting of white everywhere and then make the, the highlight layers more pronounced with like a solid coat of the ink. But the striking contrast 
really does help. And when you compare it, like, what I can get done with these speed paints with this method compared to the, uh, like, what actually, like, comes out of it. Oh, like, you'd have to do so much wet blending or glazes to kind of get the equivalent going. That's just too much for me. even with all the drawbacks, because there are quite a few, actually, with speed paints. But then again, I have been accused of being a bit of an Army Painter fanboy at times. That's not totally wrong. I do like their products, but that's mostly because I really like the fact that they're kind of the cheap but good paint line. Like, I love Vallejo, but they're expensive. I think the vast... I think the majority of my paints are Vallejo, actually. But, yeah, I, I have a good selection of AP stuff as well, just because of how cheap they can be, so you can kind of build up a collection. Metallics-wise, I have more uh, Army Painter Metallics than I do Vallejo stuff, even though, without a doubt, Vallejo has the best metallics probably on the market. Their uh, airbrush metallics are amazing. It's partly because they have an aluminum powder instead of uh, pica. Or is it pica or is it uh, something else? Uh, five people watching, nine likes. Well, I've I had like uh, I've had people come and go from the stream, uh, K Dog. So it's not. That's surprising. Now, people can't just sit around and watch me mediocre, like, my, my mediocre self paint models all day. You know, lives, everything. Tomorrow's Easter, so totally understandable. People got things they got to prep for. So yeah, we just kind of apply this over the model, all the armor panels and everything. Avoiding any place that we don't want to be the sandy armor color. And it'll do all the other steps for us, like... Uh, shading and highlighting because of the way the uh, the paint works. Start on the chest. Try and avoid the metallic as much as possible. Hmm. 
But it amuses me when YouTube is drunk. Yeah. It's always fun. Glad I found this method online for painting kind of more of a subdued but a, a nice looking and kind of a quick paint scheme for Marines. The other one I had lined up would have involved a lot of dry brushing and uh, even stippling uh, with sponge work to uh, to get done. And I'm, I'm not, I mean, it, it would have been a different kind of more uh, grounded kind of look to them instead of this, which definitely has like larger than life highlights, but still I like the way this is turning out so far. Casing. Oh, and I guess I'll uh, announce this here um, now. Uh, what's probably going to happen is uh, I'm going to stream on this channel every Wednesday and Saturday until whichever one be is the f like, until May. And then when May comes around, I'm going to start trying to stream on Twitch. I know that'll mean the fact that uh, I won't have monetization on the, the channel and everything. But I think it'll lead to better performing streams. Not that this isn't great and that I, you know, and not that I don't appreciate everybody who showed up or is showing up and sticking around chatting and chat every so often you're all amazing uh it's more just it will give an avenue of growth because you actually can't do a lot with youtube streams if you don't also build your like non-stream content on youtube or already have kind of a built-in audience because there's really no way to search 
streams on YouTube. So, kind of just gets lost in the uh, in the void, which sucks. So, I want to try out Twitch as a as a method. Yeah, the Anto. <laughs> I was actually worried about you the most when I was making the switch because you put money into a membership, <laughs> like <laughs> like the first stream, uh, which uh, is kind of why I was chastising you a little bit because I wanted the uh, I didn't want this to become like a major thing, but so that's why I'm kind of waiting till May. That way you you get the most out of your membership. There we go. Yeah, that. Love the fact that these have a long drying time. The amount that you can kind of clean while they're still wet is amazing here. The anti oh, it's fine. <laughs> Dare you give much, much money? <laughs> he gives too much money to, to, to me. <laughs> Needs to stop. <laughs> Give it to better content creators that actually <laughs> that are actually good. at every available opportunity. <sighs> You're a menace. Hands are getting a little shaky, which definitely means I need to eat something or I'm going to get worse. I'm going to finish up this marine before I do so. the eyes.
rest of the backpack done. to the shoulder pads and the back of the chest actually we'll do the back of the chest next you know one of my original plans for this army I was thinking about before I decided before I realized just how much how many marines I have and how many I've got to paint to finish them up uh, was to paint these kind of like scale model like scale armor modeling to use a lot of those techniques on the marines and like and, the, and their armor made a lot of sense to me then I realized just how much effort that would take <laughs> and uh, the fact that uh, there's only so many hours in the day <laughs> so I kind of decided against going forward with that idea though it, I'm, I am curious about using some of those techniques using chipping fluid and various other things on marines might might be pretty good that and pre-shading who knows if I get some more like throwaway marines I might try some of that see how it, how it looks you can always use them on characters I I don't know. I mean, because I want the the look to be fairly uniform across the army. So, I mean, this is a technically a character. So, I mean, a lieutenant, but I mean, still a character. So, I'm going to be using kind of the same thing. I'm just going to put a little bit more effort into, like, the faces, if they have a face. That kind of stuff is the plan, at least. Anyways, I have a lot of Marines that I need to paint up, so I'd rather not take, like, a huge amount of time on on them. I mean, a lot of Marines. I'll have nearly a company's worth, I think, by the end. It won't really form a codex compliant company, but still, it'll in raw numbers. I'll have nearly a hundred marines. Because what do I got? That's uh, I've got the Indominus box, which is what that's squad of uh, assault intercessors. Oop. Nope, 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 nope. That I've gone through my my track uh, that was not a paradox interactive uh, soundtrack uh, just let me Go ahead and uh, get an album going. Uh, 
Did they just put the Victoria 2 soundtrack on here? Looks like they did. Oh no, it's been on here for a while. Why have I never seen that before? Just gonna put that on there. Get some. Get some vanilla. Uh, get some violins up in here. Let's get that string section going. Uh, about half company of Primaris and the rest is Firstborn. I think all mine. Well, all of mine will be Primaris. Um, but yeah, I've got the. I've got the Indominus box. Then I've got the Shield Breaker uh, Battle Force box from uh, this Christmas uh, that I picked up, which complements very well with the uh, Indominus box because there's almost no re there's almost no specialty unit repeats that can't be also used. So it'll give me so those two together give me two Assault Intercessors. Uh, squads, two squads, or, or uh, a full six-man unit of uh, blade guard veterans, uh, outriders. Just, uh, basically, there's no, there's almost no repeats. A whole bunch of characters, um, and because of the what I picked up, I think basically I'll have two squads of Assault Intercessors, two squads of Regular Intercessors, two squads of Heavy Intercessors, Eradicators, uh, Outriders, uh, one, of the, one Speeder of some sort, um, plus characters. And what else is there? And then there's the all the stuff from the Imperium magazine, which there's quite a bit. Uh, and those are all... Uh, and those all add to there. So, I mean, there's there's a lot. I've got a lot kind of getting, like, uh, that'll need painting. And, yeah, it'll be nearly 100 Marines, especially if you include the vehicles. Not a lot of vehicles, though. It'll be a very infantry-heavy force because they'll be... Essentially, I'll have a six... Six Outriders, an ATV, and a Speeder, and that'll be the only vehicles. I uh, heard GW is bringing back Dwarves to 40k or something. Uh, yeah, Squats. Yeah, they uh, uh, they finally unsquatted the Squats, essentially. Though now they're called the now they're known as the League of Voltan, or whatever. Uh, not too fussed. They they look kind of okay, but I, they didn't really lean into the squat aesthetic that people really liked and the reason that squats were kind of iconic. And they didn't really lean into them being space dwarves. They kind of just leaned into them being slightly higher tech human faction. So it's kind of like a mix of Tau and uh, uh, Imperial Guard aesthetic in a way, but they're shorter than Marines, but still kind of taller than the current Imperial Guard uh, models. So it's weird. They're not really dwarves. So yeah. Painted up here. All right, Space Dwarfs. <laughs> But they really don't lean into the dwarf aesthetic. It's, it's that's that's the thing. I wish they did. Then they'd be really unique, and I I'd actually kind of like them. But they they seem like super. F well, I guess not generic's the word because forty k has an aesthetic. But they seem forty k generic. That that I guess that's a word now. Is my problem with them.
they don't really have a, a thing that jumps out at me is like oh that's their thing like Tau like Tau has a thing they've got like armor with like deep uh, with deep paneling so it's like very panel lined and sleek and boxy at the same time uh, you got Imperial Guard, which is basically just, like, regular humans, but space. Space Marines, they've got, the, you know, the big shoulder pads and the, you know, the very Space Marine aesthetic. Eldar got the Space Elves, very sleek design aesthetic. Uh, you know, Tyranids are, you know, very biological stuff. You know, they all have an, a thing for them, but the, the, at least from what we've seen, the one model we've seen, so obviously I can't make a definitive judgment. Uh, we haven't really seen anything that gives them kind of a defining feature. Uh, I don't know if it's a character that we've seen or if it's just a basic trooper. If it's a basic trooper, then obviously we won't get, like, a great idea. But yeah, it's like, uh, could go either way, honestly. That's, that, 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 that's my take. It could go either way, but I'm not really fussed right now about them. Could take or leave them, really. I think it's good that they're coming back in the abstract of, oh, cool. They, that lore is no longer kind of just like left out. It's, you know, it's actually acknowledged now and everything, but it's, uh, yeah. Uh,. Definitely seems like an everyman's army for the squats. Heavier armor than typical guard, advanced weapons, but likely more human stats. I, th I think what they're going to try and go for is that it's it's going to be a... it's At least I think they're going to try and make them what Space Marines used to be for the game. Because if you remember, like, Space Marines used to be the faction you started with. Like, they were the the easy faction that you could just kind of play. And you didn't have to be, like, super tactical to like you know it was easy to learn kind of harder to master like you know well not even hard to master just space breeds used to be very accessible as a, as a force but they've just added so much shit to the space marine army list that it's it's kind of grown out of control and if you're starting 40k space marines aren't actually a great place to start with just because of how complex they can get. Uh, it'll bridge a gap between the Marines and Guard, I think, in a way Stormtroopers doesn't quite. Probably. I, I don't know. It, we'll, we'll see. I'm worried. Uh, I think Discourse said something like this. I am also worried that they'll just become another, like, hero faction. Like, just a faction with, like, a very small number of core units and just a whole bunch of, of random, like, you know, special characters. And if that happens, then they definitely won't become kind of the easy unit that'll bridge everything it, it, or the easy army that'll bridge everything. It'll, they'll just become kind of a, uh, I don't know. They just, they won't have the same appeal. Cause I could definitely see it going that way. Like that's not out of the question, honestly. Get the dark wood going for the leather bits. Get that vortex mixer going. There we 
we go. Last load of laundry's done. All right. Okay. Yeah, I've got to do these one step at a time because they look almost exactly the same on the pallet most of the time. Yeah, I guess we'll have to wait and see, Atari. I mean, that doesn't look half bad as like as like a primary color. Like I haven't even done like the the leather bits or the uh uh, or the undersuit, but as like a primary color, that's a lot better than a, than the other one. Like that's a lot brighter of a sand color. Like it's still got shadows, but I love the way that that under like the undercoat of the uh, the like really uh, aggressive white highlight over black really shows through. It looks pretty good. I also really like this dark wood color. It's a really rich brown. So if you've got a nice white undercoat to it, I think it looks like a really, really like rich dark leather, which I like on these Marines. I'm gonna be honest, I really look forward to seeing what Army Painter does with the Speed Paints line. I hope it does well because I'd love to see more colors from them. Like we what we we don't have like a really nice red brown would be nice. Like a reddish brown. That would be like a perfect like leather color, like a supple leather. That make like a good boot leather. But uh, we don't got that right now, which kind of sucks. Not even sure GW has like a good, like supple, like red, brown leather kind of color. Can't think of one. That could just be me not being as familiar with that line. Welcome back, K Dog.
It's no problem. There's not an, as many people in here as like a, a really, really big stream. So I like making sure you guys know that I, I'm aware of you and I appreciate you all being here. It's always nice to kind of, I don't know. I, I Yeah, you know, I like larger streams, obviously, but having the smaller ones with, you know, just a couple of people kind of back and forth in chat is always nice. See what I'm saying with that brown? It's called dark wood, but I, I think that is just a, a really nice leather. Like, it's not even dry yet, but I can you can just see how that looks like a really nice... A really nice dark brown leather. Very rich kind of brown leather. Okay, now we get to the part that I haven't done before, which would be the Grave Lord Grey for the uh, under like armor bits, for the soft armor bits. Oop, and I can see one spot where we need to paint the uh, sword as well with the original pallid bone color. Yeah, those look almost the exact same on the palette, so gonna keep like the order of the paints the same so I can kind of remember just gonna do that original palette bone color so let just get that on the back end of the pommel here Definitely has a leathery texture to it. That looks cool. I'm not sure what you're referring as the cool bit. Probably the leather. But. Okay, let's get the Gravior, Gravelord Grey going. Let's get this in the soft armor bits. Use a much thinner brush for this bit. 
need something I can kind of get in between. undersuit painted <sighs> now one of the questions I have to figure out is what am I going to do with the eyes because if the plan is to use this kind of turquoisey bluish green for the cloth then I can't really use that as the color for the eyes, which would be the most, which, which would be what you'd think. You'd think you'd, you'd use something that contrasts with the armor, like, a lot. I want to use a darker blue for the rank uh, differentiation for the helmets. So, like, the lieutenant's helmet's going to have a, uh, uh, it's going to have, uh, pretty sure what I'm planning on doing is having a blue... A blue top bit, but the the pallid bone like faceplate. Uh, so we'll keep that. So I can't use blue for the eyes, which kind of just leaves me in terms of primary colors, yellow or red. Yellow is very close to sandy and uh, to the sandy color of the armor, so that won't really contrast well. So I guess I'm kind of just stuck with red. Essentially, yeah, I think I think I'm just stuck with red. So if that's the case, then I think just so we have the best possible outcome here, we'll go ahead and we'll use a little bit of blood red, and we're gonna see about painting the eye, the eyes a little bit. And I'm not going to touch the metal, because I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the metal of the gun and basically all of the non, like, aluminum slash silver color, I'm going to give one more coat of a, of a less diluted dark tone wash. Well, no chance I'll forget what that color is. That is a very red red, so. Before I do that, I am going to just I'm going to pour myself a cup of tea and I'm going to have my the snack I allotted myself earlier. So, I got myself a little food bar, a little nutrition bar that I'm going to have. Uh, but yeah, we need to paint the red eyes. We won't touch the metallic bits yet. I'm going to let that dry for a while before I, I do. Once that's done, really we won't have a lot else to do on the individual marine. There's a little, there's a little undersuit bits that we can touch up a little bit. And maybe apply a pallid bone to a few sections that I can see where we didn't have a, as good of a layer uh, on it. But, like, just a little bit. And after that, it'll be mostly done. I might get, like, a really dark gray and hit the face tubing with that. Just, like, over that. Uh, but, yeah.
that'll kind of be the uh, the process we'll go with, and then we'll uh, hopefully be a little faster on the next two. Though they have faces, like uncovered heads, which will be a process. Now, I picked up a while ago the Army Painter uh, skin set. It's just a whole bunch of different skin tones with a couple of de dedicated skin washes. I might try some of them. I haven't really tried them because I need to kind of learn how to do Middle Eastern skin for this army. So I'm going to need to figure out what to use. The Cosmic Chef, Hail Roach. Hail! How you doing? You caught me right as I was taking my my one uh, snack break. Hands are starting to shake, so I needed to eat something. Problem, it's very chewy. Kind of a chewy lemon bar. I'll switch because I know some people don't like watching people eat on stream. <laughs> I guess you could call this a snack tangent, yeah. Chewy bar, give me a second. <laughs> okay, need to wash that down a little bit. <laughs> Not a good first impression for Cosmic Chef. <laughs> Just jumped in here. Also, red's a fairly common eye color for most uh, marine chapters, actually. So it wouldn't be, like, out of the ordinary. Wow, I needed to shake that tea up a little bit. That uh, the, uh, the sugar I put into it uh, definitely settled to the bottom. So that, that, uh, that is a very bland cup of uh, Earl Grey. At least the, uh, the milk I added to it didn't uh, settle. Uh, okay, so let's get the red going. The very uh, small eyes, eye lenses. Okay. I need a really fine point on this brush.
that doesn't look bad. See how that dries with the uh, speed paints. So just need to check my messages here to make sure nothing's blowing up. Don't think there is. Okay. So. Okay, eyes are painted. There's a couple of little bits and pieces that didn't really get a good coverage, so I'm going to just hit them a little bit with the pallid bone. Just one more coat of it. It's very small areas, like uh, a couple places I missed. Like in between arm bits. From the sound of the fan behind me, I can also tell that that uh, the 3D printer has finished its print. So, that ought to be something I deal with after the stream, because I thought I'd be a little bit further along on this before uh, that would finish, but oh well. Okay, I will say, other than going back, touching it up, and hitting anything with, uh, like, standard, like, paints, like the uh, shoulder insignia, and the, uh, some of the metals getting a second coat of, like, a black wash, uh, that is a finished marine. Which, uh, I have to say does not look half bad for the time we spent on it. Like, this is maybe 75% done? Yeah, I'd say 75 to, like, 70 to 75. So it's like, it's like 30 to 25-ish percent left. but I don't think that's that bad. And obviously, as a group, any paint scheme looks better in a group. So I, I don't I don't think this is going to be... I don't think this looks as... It, it will look better when there are, like, three or four... When there's a full squad of them together. It, it, that, that's kind of always the thing with the uh, paint schemes. They may not necessarily look the best individually, but once you start getting the, a lot together they start kind of like blending and, and looking better. So. Let's go ahead and start on Marine 2. She is going to need uh, the face done. Same with uh, the lieutenant here. But I can get all the speed paint stuff done, let that dry, hit it with a varnish coat, then start in the face and all the brush painting stuff, which is what I'm going to do with this one as well, though this doesn't need any brushing. So, kind of works. Biggest thing about speed paints is you got to get the right amount of paint on the brush. You can't... got to have a good undercoat and got to have the right amount of paint on the brush. If you don't, you're kind of screwed 
too much or too little can really hurt. That is not Pallid Bone. That is Sand Golem. That is the wrong paint. I was wondering why that was so brown. Okay. Well, here's the thing. You can easily lift this up. A little makeup sponge and water. is why these speed paints need to be better organized and be kind of off to the side so I don't do that again. So yeah, you can see this is live. I made a mistake. <laughs> bad. Uh, same with this one over here. It needs... Basically, a used up brush, so we're just gonna sop up all of that. Toss that. Okay. Pallid bone. Which is the paint we should be using. <laughs> So if 30k ever got into a live action movie, who would play the Emperor? <laughs> Honestly, if the if 40k got a live action like series, I wouldn't want it following the em like the Emperor or like any major person. I'd want it kind of focusing on kind of the you know, the lowly soldier or something. Like give me a or I guess it could focus on like a character, but make it like a like a lower level character, like a uh, like I don't know. Give me like Colonel Commissar from Gaunt or uh, from Gaunt's Ghost, or I don't know Colonel Schaefer from the Thirteenth Last Chancers, or I don't know what's the other one? Colonel Strachan, I think is the the big one from uh, the Catachans. Like, give me an Imperial Guard or like a. Like, just a minor space marine, like, captain or, uh, like, or lieutenant, I guess. Maybe even just a sergeant. Give me one squad of space marines and just, like, just make it, like, really 
like a really intimate war story, like very close in. Be an amazing way of showing off the universe. I mean, that's not the way that they would do it because, well, there's a lot. There's a lot of reasons they wouldn't do that. But yeah, they. That's not the way they would do it. But it would be great if they did. Forty K doesn't do like personal character stories that well. Not really built for that. But it does, I mean, some of them do. I mean, Hell's Reach is a really great, like, personal, you know, story. Of a space marine, no less. Some of the early Black Library books as well have some pretty good, like, small, like, uh, character count stories that aren't like mystery based like actual like warfare though i was under the impression isn't there like a netflix or not netflix like an like a amazon prime series being made for like uh what the eisenhorn uh story like it's an eisenhorn series i may get that i may be wrong about that but i, I thought there was one I honestly don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Pretty sure if you looked it up, you'd find it out pretty quick. But I thought there was an Eisenhorn series in the in the making. Because that was like the, the big thing people thought was going to be like the next step in 40k uh, like to the mainstream was uh, if that did well, then you'd start seeing a lot of stuff uh happen in terms of like movie and like video content but uh that was then right around the same time they announced uh warmer plus and then that kind of hope died out
Google really created their own streaming service. That last I checked was doing really bad. Yeah, no, it, it is. Yeah, that's that's Warmer Plus. It's uh, it's not doing well. Well, we think it's not doing well. They don't actually have their numbers public. I definitely haven't actually, like, delivered on a lot of the promises they had about uh, how much uh, content they'd be delivering every week. It actually retroactively changed some of those online posts about uh, what they're bringing out every week, so it's not, uh, it's not great. Definitely think they over, they underestimated how much effort it was going to be to maintain something like that. Okay. Is anyone surprised? Also, hi, Roach. Hi, chat. Hey, Red. Welcome to the stream. Hope Rivals went all right. some of the yeah being such a small mech can be a fickle thing Anto's been getting around tonight. <laughs> Anto's been here since the start.
I've just been in the background uh, here and there. <laughs> just got just have a multitude of content, don't you, Anto? It does kind of suck that this is the best time I have to stream on the weekends, because I, I do miss joining in for the uh, the Battletech, or I, for the Mech Warrior streams. It's always uh, fun. Ah, oh, Red, no! <laughs> Red, I'm only going to be streaming on this channel for like another... For like another week or two, and then I'm moving over to Twitch. So this is just, you're just wasting money. I already told the Anto to stop. <laughs> I'm not sure what the the expl the 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 what is in relation to. I'm assuming it's 
that I'm going to be streaming on Twitch. Ech. don't need to, Red. Also, I won't be able to accept money on Twitch for a while because I'll have to build up an audience there. Which, admittedly, is a lot easier through live streams uh, on Twitch because you can actually search by live streams and categories and a whole bunch of other things that you can't do in uh, YouTube. Uh what is for trying to tell me I shouldn't do something? Oh, okay. The horror of it all. Yes, K-Dog, the horror of it all. It's not the horror that I got money. I'm okay with that. It's the fact that uh, that I'm not... The... The... the what is it? Uh, expectation is that you, you put money in through a membership and you're going to be getting content throughout that membership's time. But because of the fact that I'm going to be switching over to Twitch. Ooh, okay, yep. Uh, this is what happens when you talk with your hands. I'm going to be switching over to Twitch before the end of that um, membership. Uh, it's not you're not getting the full amount of money out of it. I mean, you're already not because I'm me. But still. <laughs> Okay, let's get dark wood going.
I'm gonna double check that this is still Victoria through two's uh, uh, soundtrack. Oh, it is. It's the exact last song. <laughs> keep an eye on that. Don't want another random song playing at the end of this. That's not something I can use on stream. Paradox went all out for the Victoria 2 soundtrack. They did not have to go this hard. Yeah, Paradox music as a whole is great, but I'm, I'm talking, but like specifically the fact that this is like a full orchestral like soundtrack that's like I don't know, maybe it's also because it's a Victorian kind of themed music, and that's something that appeals to me. I mean, come on, listen to that. That's amazing. It's like an angel singing into your ear. <sighs> I 
And that is the end of it. Uh, let's see, what other one? Uh, doesn't Paracore Rome have a soundtrack on here? That would be interesting. Mm, let's do Battle Attack. Battle Attack's always a good go to. Okay, that's this. I really just need to make like a a whole like uh, playlist for streaming that just has all the soundtracks in one. That way I don't have to keep manually finding one. That takes forethought and effort though, so it's never going to get done. didn't pull a Skyrim like Bethesda. I'm not sure what you mean. As in, like, remake a game or something? A thousand times? Or just keep re-releasing a game? That one looks even better than the previous one because it's yeah I think this one looks even better than the previous one because it's uh the highlight was a bit brighter definitely turned out well Now we've got. Now we got this girl here. Whew. Let me check the time. Uh, three hours, 30 minutes. What time is it right now? Almost six o'clock. Yeah. Oh, I think what I'm going to do is... Whew, well, I'm tired. Starting to flag a little bit. So, uh, I think what's going to happen is, uh... I didn't catch all that YouTube as being a bitch. Eh, it's, it's all right. Uh, but yeah, I think um, I think with three hour, three and a half hours of uh, stream time, we started a little late. It's almost six o'clock at night. My back's a little sore. I need to take like a pain pill and uh, probably start work and. Uh, get to that 3d print that uh, finished like two and a half hours ago so yeah i think that's going to be it for me tonight ah <sighs> because if we uh if we
I keep going any longer, then I'm going to start just yawning into the microphone and everything. We got two Marines done with the speed painting phase. Uh, the Lieutenant needs to be done, but I can probably do that in the middle of the week. I also need to do some testing on, like, uh, the cloth and stuff to see what I like. Uh, but a lot of, lot of uh, work done today, so that's not bad. Uh, so, yeah, I think... I think this is a good time to go ahead and end it. So I want to thank you all for joining me today uh, for this stream. It's been a blast. Uh, keep an eye out. I'm going to be doing these every Saturday uh, from here on in, uh, from here on out. Uh, they'll be on this channel until the beginning of May. The first Saturday of May, I will start streaming on Twitch. I'll, I'll put as much uh, warning out for that as possible if you'd like to come and join. Uh, but yeah, thanks for joining me. I hope you all have a, uh, a good day and, uh, or I guess a good night or whatever time it is out there. And I will 